All right, so here we are. Um, this is for the 30th of uh, September, the last day of the month. Uh, it's lecture number 15 for logic design. Um, and it's... Uh, so, um, and here's... Let me shrink myself down. We'll talk about the syllabus just a little bit. So here we are, and again, week six. So we had Monday, now we're coming to Wednesday. Uh, but we've already covered the second half of Quinn and McCluskey on Monday, so now we're going to do Chapter 7, Two-Layer Networks with and, or, NAND, and NOR. So we're going to expand our gates uh, a little bit, and, and uh, we're going to see how these uh, play into the uh, picture. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, okay. I think that's oh homework homework five is due tonight so remember homework five due tonight if I have time at the end I'll take I'll take a look at some of the homework five questions okay so uh, unit seven um, and on the test I have done that video uh, but I haven't posted it yet uh, we have oh, there was one student who had a medical excuse and uh, uh, was in the hospital and she stayed uh, there they are taking the test today uh, and uh, so uh, once that happens uh, then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, post that video so you can see it uh, and I may I, I may just post that for Friday so uh, but I will uh, and I might not do a quiz for Friday then because of that okay but there will be a quiz today all right so so um, so multi-layer networks so you already know that we have two canonical forms. We have the SOP and the POS form. The SOP form, and I know I've, I've beaten this, uh, this drama you know, quite a bit, but I, I, want, I want you to have this firmly in your head. So the two canonical forms are the SOP and the POS. That does not mean those are the only two layer forms out there. There are some other forms, and, there's, and there are actually some, some other canonical forms that have been laid out. Uh, as a different way to approach the teaching of logic design. But we're doing it more traditional with uh, the and, or, and, or, and as the two canonical forms. So as you know, the SOP has a number of input AND gates with each one having a number of inputs. And they all go into a single output OR gate that generates the final output from the two-layer network. And that is the SOP form. The POS form has a number of OR gates in the input layer with, a num with each one having some number of inputs. All the OR gates feed into a single AND gate and it ANDs them all together to generate an output. Um, now, there are practical limits to the number of inputs gates can have. And so for that reason, uh, we sometimes uh, have to work with this concept called fan in and fan out and we will eventually cover this. Uh, we've talked about it briefly, but uh, there are other ways of, of implementing two-layer networks. And one of those ways uh, is, uh, or, or we will see, well, that's what we're going to look at in the lecture today. We're going to look at the fact that, there, that if you take two additional gates, the NAND gate and the NOR gate, that gives you four different gates to work with. And of those four, you can make 16 different two-layer combinations. Of the 16 two-layer combinations, eight of them cannot implement any arbitrary uh, uh, switching function, but the other eight can. And so we're, so we're interested in the eight that can, and we're going to show you how you can take your two canonical forms and manipulate them into these other, well, so you take two from eight, uh, so that leaves six other forms that you can manipulate them into. And the way you do that is very straightforward. You, you just use uh, De Morgan's laws for getting the inverse, and you do a double inverse, which if you take x and invert it twice, you're back to x, right? The first inversion is x prime, and the second inversion is back to x. So any logic expression inverted two times isn't changed. It's still the same expression. And so what we do is we invert it twice, but we don't fully um, we don't fully uh, work out the two inversions. And when you partially expand those two inversions, you can get 
uh, three partial expansions and then finally you're back to the original formula. And so we'll show you that. And you can do that starting with the SOP form and you can do that starting with the POS form. And if you do that, that gives you four different expressions using SOP and four different expressions using POS and that's, those are your eight, uh, uh, eight alternate two-layer networks. Of those, there are two that we're particularly interested in. Uh, and those two are the NAN NAN ver version and the NOR NOR version. You get the NAN NAN version when you uh, use De Morgan's Laws on the SOP form, and you get the NOR NOR version when you use De Morgan's Laws on the POS form. The other forms are less used for sure, uh, but we'll look at them briefly anyway. Okay, and then. Um, We'll talk about what happens when you have multiple outputs. Now this is very relevant for your student projects, which you're hopefully working on and you're hopefully getting your truth tables uh, worked out. Make sure you read the problem several times. Make sure you understand what you have to do. And if you have questions and problems, I'll schedule a, a private Zoom session with you and we will uh, work through that. Or you can just come on Monday at the standard office hours uh, and we'll go through that in Zoom as well. Um, this week, uh, office hours was a little bit crowded with, uh, with people from Micro One uh, because they had a test uh, today. And so they were asking kind of last minute questions. But uh, normally, uh, there are not that many students there. But if you want a special session, we can set that up too. And I will help you uh, with your design. There, there, there are one or two that are a little bit tricky, uh, but the rest of them are very straightforward. And you do have a, a limited number of gates you're allowed. So make sure you hit that target. If you miss that target, I will deduct some points from your, from your presentation. Um, okay, um, moving on. So, as you know, we have these two canonical forms, and now we're going we're gonna to introduce this uh, concept of functionally complete set of gates. We've kind of talked about this already, and and or and or and with inverters. You need inverters with these gates, but if you use the inverter, an AND gate and an OR gate, you have two uh, functionally complete sets. So our, our, maybe a better way to say it is inverters, AND gate, and OR gate is a functionally complete set of gates. But there are, there are six other functionally complete sets as well, and we'll go over those. And some of them don't even need inverters because they are inherently inverting. Uh, and that would be NAND and NOR. So the two new types of gates we're going to talk about are the NAND gate and the NOR gate. Uh, and, the, and so one of the questions that might have popped up in your mind is why would we want, uh, why do we need more than AND gates, OR gates, and inverters? Well, the reason for that is that if you look at the, uh, the, the hardware, uh, particularly uh, building gates out of uh, CMOS transistors on integrated circuits, you will find that it's actually uh, easier or, well, maybe easier is the wrong word, but it takes less transistors to make a NAND gate or a NOR gate than it does an AND gate or an OR gate. And so because of that, uh, the NAND gates and, and the NOR gates have become very popular in integrated cir circuit fabrication. In addition to that, if you're building a two-layer network, how much more convenient to have all the layers have the same gates? That, that, makes, that just makes your, your layout and you know, just all the, all the, it just simplifies your circuit uh, fabrication process a little bit. And so because of that, we, uh, those are, those tend to be the technologies that are used in uh, most integrated circuits. So typically when, when you actually make a, make an integrated circuit, uh, your gate, the gates that are actually used are probably either NAN, NAN, or NOR, NOR. Uh, and there are reasons why they might pick one or the other. Um, and that could obviously change, uh, that may change with time. It is possible that in time we may actually find some other different types of gates that, that work better, especially if we find ourselves forced to change to a different uh, technology. Okay. So, again, we've this concept of cost or uh, how difficult or how, how much hardware it takes to implement your logic expression. So it depends on the total number of gates, the total number of inputs, and it also on the propagation time, which includes how many layers, and also 
then there's issues of the quality of the hardware or size. Obviously, the higher voltage you run at, the faster it's going to work, uh, potentially. But at the, the hotter it's going to get, the more current it's going to draw. Uh, and you may, may have trouble with the same density of components because of the heat generation problem. And so, um, uh, and so as we shrink feature size, uh, that may uh, we may be able to run just as fast or faster with lower voltages. Um, and uh, yeah, just lots of features. Um, so let's see, I didn't mean to actually do that, but there we are. So, okay, so let's look at how we can do, um, one, of, one of the other things I, I didn't mention, but sometimes we, we're willing to pay a small price in our propagation delay through our two layer network by adding a layer, which obviously increases the time through the network, at least the worst case time through the network. But sometimes we get a tremendous simplification by doing that. And so in those cases, we're, we're tempted to add that third layer. And that, that gives us then uh, these following options. So when, when we create, when we take a truth table and we, we want to look at all the different ways of implementing it, we can look at it the POS form, the SOP form, or we can take the POS form and expand it to AND or AND, or we can take the SOP form and expand it to OR AND OR. Now these are not going to be faster, but they may, uh, one of these four may result in simpler hardware. And obviously if we can do it in two layers, we'd, we'd prefer that because of the, the, the speed advantage. Um, okay. Now, uh, we can change between these different layers uh, when we want to expand from say OR AND to AND OR AND or from AND OR to OR AND OR, we normally just use switching algebra to do that. And it's actually pretty easy. We're just going to, uh, in the case of OR AND going to AND OR AND, we just partially uh, factor it, or sorry, partially multiply it out. And uh, going from AND OR to OR AND OR, we just partially factor it. So it's pretty straightforward. All right. So, uh, so let's, so here's an example. Let's say we had the logic expression ABC plus ACD plus ABD. Well, you can certainly factor the A out. Now let's compare this. Here we have two layers, but here we have three layers. Here we have four gates and they all have three inputs. Here we have five gates. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. And they all have two inputs. So we've reduced, we've reduced, we went from 12 inputs to 10 inputs. So if your interest was decreasing inputs, then this would be an advantage. Here we have nine literals uh, <clears throat> uh, with uh, th three in the output. And here we have 10 literals with just two in the output. So uh, there are pros and cons. Um, but in any event, uh, uh, sometimes, so this may not be the best example, uh, but there are places where you could, uh, where we might see a much better example. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I'm, yeah, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, that, that we, we partially factored this, uh, and that, that, that does increase our layers. It actually increases our gates too, but it does decrease uh, the number of inputs uh, dramatically. Uh, okay, so anyway. I probably need a better example for that. Um, all right, let's talk about new types of gates, the NAND and the NOR. So here's the NAND gate. All it is is an AND gate with an inverter on the output. And here's the truth table for it. It's exactly the opposite of an AND gate. And here's the NOR gate, and it's exactly the opposite of an OR gate. Now here are the uh, 16 possible uh, gates, the eight useful ones and the eight that are not uh, functionally complete sets. So we're just, we're going to just completely ignore these. Um, but these are these are very useful, and uh, especially the NAND, NAND, and the NOR, NOR. 
and we can convert from any one of these to the others. Now, it a better way to represent this is with these two, uh, well, not with this, but here are all 16, but the ones marked with a star are the ones that are useful. But here they are in a better display. And so this side, we start in SOP form. This, start with, we, we, this side, we start with POS form. Now notice, we, have, we, we, we can't get to nor nor when we're, in POS, when we're in SOP form. We have to first switch to POS form and then partially in, do the double invert and partially expand it and we'll get to nor nor. All right, so let me, let me do this. I'm gonna do this on the little tablet. I think that, that it'll make a little more sense. So let me first copy this. Um, actually, I'll just pause it while I copy it so you don't have to wait for that. Okay, so here's our initial expression. Now, the way we do this, we're just going to put a brackets around it and invert the whole thing with a little tick there. And then we'll just put brackets around again and do another inversion. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to partially expand these. Now, if we totally expanded them, we would get back to this initial expression, A plus BC prime plus B prime CD. But we're only going to partially expand them. Now, you can also think of this, you can, we, can, we can just put parentheses around all these, and we'll rewrite this. And I'll call it A plus BC prime plus B prime CD. And then we're going to invert all that, and we're going to invert it again. Okay, same thing, right? Now, re let's pretend instead of this, let's just let's just abbreviate this with x, uh, y, z. Okay, so then we'll say we have we have x plus y plus z inverted and then inverted again. All right, so let's partially expand it. So what would that give us? Well, we'll leave the outside, and what we would then get is um, we would get x prime, y prime, z prime, and then that whole thing inverted. Now, if we inverted that, obviously that just gets us back to x plus y plus z. But we're going to leave it in this form. Now, what, what do you see here? Well, you see, uh, you, so you have these three things, and they're anded together. Now, when we substitute back in, we have just a single variable here, but when we substitute these back in, we get an AND gate that's inverted. So when we substitute those back in, now we have A prime times BC prime quantity prime times B prime CD quantity prime, and then the whole thing inverted again. Okay, so, so now you can see this is an AND gate that's inverted, so that's an AND gate. And these, except for this degenerative term all by itself, these are also, BC prime is an AND gate with an inverter, so that's a NAND gate. And there's another NAND gate. So this is in NAND, oops, sorry. So A prime is an, it, by itself, so that's a degenerative example. But BC prime and B prime CD these are NAND gates with the output inverted. See, that's B prime and it was C and it with D, and then the output inverted. And then this whole thing here is just X and it with X prime and it with Y prime and it with Z prime, and then the whole output from that inverted. So that would be like an AND gate with X prime, Y prime, and Z prime going in. And now this is like another set of AND gates. So what we have then is a NAND, NAND network. We have a bunch of NAND gates, in this case, and just A prime by itself, with inverters on the output. And these are going into another NAND gate with an inverter on it to give us our output F. And the inputs to this would be B, C prime, and here, B prime, C, D. That has two inputs, that has three, that's just a variable by itself.
but we do have to invert it. Okay, so uh, so so this 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 is this circuit is what this. Uh, let's see, you can't quite see the circuit. Sorry, this circuit then right here. is the same as this expression. Now, now that we've kind of worked through the first one, let me just comment on this. So first off, you need to realize that we have, if we have like ABC, so, so we take this, that's an AND gate. If we have A plus B plus C, that's an OR gate. If we have ABC, quantity inverted, that's a NAN. And if we have A plus B plus C inverted, that's a NOR. So these, these are the figures you have to be able to recognize sort of in your head. So when you see this, think AND gate. When you see this, think OR gate. When you see this with the little tick up here, think NAN. And when you see this with the little tick up here, think NOR. This just means the output inverted. So it's an AND gate with the output inverted, or a NAND. This just means an OR gate with the output inverted, or a NOR. Now obviously, and interestingly, you should, if we, if we switch this around and we take this tick in here, what does that give you? That gives you A prime, B prime, C prime. So what that tells you is that, a, that, that an AND gate with all the inputs inverted equals an OR gate with the output inverted. Interesting, huh? And if we, uh, and, and there are several other uh, alterations. One of them is if we take, uh, if we take an AND gate with three inputs, we can, it's exactly equivalent to an AND gate with all three of the inputs inverted, uh, sorry, to an OR gate with all three of the inputs inverted and the output inverted too. Now how do I know that? Well, I can take, so an AND gate equals this OR gate. How do I know that? Well, if I take an AND gate, ABC, and I invert it once and then I invert it again, guess what, I, when I bring this in here, I get A prime, plus B prime plus C prime quantity inverted. Now we know the double inversion is equal to ABC. So we know then that ABC is equal to this. Well, what is this? Well, using this construct here, that is a NOR gate with the inputs all uh, the inverse of these variables. So if we just put inverters on here and put ABC in, we will have effectively A prime, B prime, C prime going in the output's inverted, and that's equivalent to our AND gate. So that gives us that gives us our equivalent gate symbols, which we'll cover here in a minute, but I'm just going to go ahead and do them. So our equivalent gate symbols, an AND gate just equals an OR gate with all the inputs inverted and the output inverted. We'll make it a two input. An OR gate is equal to an AND gate with all the with the inputs inverted and the output inverted. And similarly, a NAND gate is equal to an OR gate with just the inputs inverted. And no and no inverter on the output. And a NOR gate is just equal to a NAND gate with the inputs inverted and no output inverted. Uh, and not an AND gate, an AND gate. So those are our alternate gate symbols. And you can, you can directly substitute these in any schematic. And the other thing is, if you have, say you have a schematic like this where you have a bubble here and it goes down and you've got a bubble on, an, on say an R gate here or something like that and you've got some other things going in and who knows what. You can take this bubble and slide it up here on this wire and cancel them out. 
so they'll cancel each other out. Or if you have a, a gate like this going down to an OR gate, you can add a bubble on each end if you want because obviously that doesn't change anything. So two bubbles can slide on a wire. Also, if say you have a bubble here and you don't have a bubble down here and you have a wire, then you can slide that bubble down to there and remove it here. So bubbles can slide, bubbles can cancel. You can add two bubbles uh, on either ends of a wire. And you can directly substitute these gates. So you can do the same manipulation using graphical symbols that we're going to do algebraically. Okay, so let me work this out then. So basically, we start with the with that original expression here. Uh, a plus BC prime plus B prime C D inverted and then double inverted. All right. Now, let's see how we go all around that circle. So, so this is in, so the, the original expression is SOP form. All right, so we're going to partially invert this, and we're going to get to A prime plus uh, the quantity B C prime, uh, B, B C prime inverted, sorry, no plus, it's going to be a times. Let me just rewrite this. Let me just start over. Okay. I, want to, I want to make it so it looks decent. Okay, so the original expression uh, A plus B C prime plus B prime C D prime. All right, so there's, there's our original expression. And now we're going to, we're going to modify a little bit and we're going to do the double inversion. Partially expand the inner one, and that's going to give us that's going to give us a prime times or added with b b c prime, but this is inverted, added with quantity b prime c d prime, but this is also inverted, and then the whole thing is one big NAND gate, a NAND gate with this inverted. Okay? Golly. So this is this that's the second step. Now the third step we're gonna we'll take we so the third step I actually have to cheat and look or right so so we're gonna so the third step we're gonna we're gonna take these ticks inside okay so it's not going to change the A. The A is still going to be A prime. And now it's just going to be B prime plus C times B plus C prime plus D. And then the whole thing still has this inversion on the outside. Now what do you see? This is, so this is, this is and or. This is uh, NAND, NAND, and this one then, what would this one be? Well, these are OR gates, so this is just OR, NAND. And if you look at this, you can see that that tracks, let me, let me put this down for a second. Let's see, where is my cursor? So you can see over here, we start with and or, we partially expand it, we get nan nan, we, par we partially expand the double inversion, we get or nan, and then the last one should be nor or. Let's see if that's the case. Okay, so then, now we're going to take this one inside, and what's that's going to do? That's going to change these to pluses, and so it's going to be a plus the quantity b prime plus c tick plus b plus c prime plus d tick, and then now we don't have 
this tick on the outside is gone. So what do we have now? Well, what's this? That is a NOR gate. And what's the whole thing? It's an OR. So that puts it in NOR OR form. So those are our those are our four types on the SOP side. Uh, AND OR, NAND NAND, OR NAND, and NOR OR. And we do exactly the same thing if we go through this same drill on the SOP side. Now, now just so you can just so you can uh, believe, let's let's convert this. So our, our original expression is a plus b c prime plus b prime c d prime. Now let's let's switch this to pos form. Well, so I'm going to use I'm going to use the multiplying and factoring theorem right off the bat, and uh, I'll use b and b prime. So I'm going to take b and hook it up with the c d. And the B, I'm going to hook up with the C. And so we'll have A plus the quantity. And then this is going to be B plus CD prime times uh, B prime plus C prime. Okay, now I, I do have to expand this. So I do have to expand this. Uh, so... I'll use uh, the second distributive law uh, here, x plus yz equals x plus y times x plus z. So then we'll wind up with a plus, uh, uh, x pl uh, uh, sorry, uh, b plus uh, c times b plus d prime times b prime plus c prime. Now if you remember we had we, we'll use the second distributive law one more time but this time we're going to use x plus w y z. Remember that corollary where we have three here? We have a plus one two three terms so this will be w y and z. So now we have a plus w y z so all that's going to be is a quantity a plus w times quantity a plus y times quantity a plus z. So that's going to give us that's going to give us a plus b plus c times a plus b plus d prime times a plus b prime plus c prime. And then if we look uh, at there here's what we have a plus b plus c a plus b prime plus c prime and a plus c prime plus d so we have exactly the same thing and then all we have to do is partially expand this just like we did the other one uh, by double inverting it and we partially expand it and let me do it over here I'll do the first one I don't think I'll go through the whole thing but let's uh, let's just bring this back yeah and so, so we'll, we'll do the double inversion. We'll put this on the inside. So when we put this in the inside, we're going to put ticks on all these. And, and we're going to put pluses in between them. So what do you see? You have this with a tick, this with a tick, this with a tick. And then you have essentially, uh, you know, uh, W plus Y plus Z with a tick. So you have in nor nor form. And as we step around the circle, the next the next step will bring these in and that'll turn these into AND gates. So then we'll have AND nor. We'll still have an external nor gate. And then we'll do the external one in and that'll turn us into NAND AND. And that's all there is to it. Uh, it's very straightforward. So and again, you can do that. You can also do that uh, using the uh, using the switching. Now, uh, I let's see if we can do that. Uh, we'll use our little we'll use our little equivalent symbols right here. Okay, we'll use our little equivalent symbols, and maybe I'll cut those out so we'll just have those handy. Let's see. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut those out.
get out my trusty Mayo scissors. These are the surgical tools that we use in the OR. These curved scissors are called Mayos, and these are for cutting really heavy things. Or, uh, uh, heavy things, and then when we want to cut really fine things, we use another pair of very fine curved scissors called Metzen bombs. So it's either mayos or Metzen bombs. We don't, and we rarely, we don't really have straight scissors. Okay, so here's our equivalent symbols. We'll just have those for reference. So let me write down. So, so in gates, our initial expression is, is uh, our initial expression, I did that too, but I'll just do it again. So initial expression then would be we have uh, an a variable and then we have one AND gate which is has B and C prime in and then we have another AND gate with three inputs that is B prime CD and then these all go into a single OR gate and that's our output F now, let's, let's make some substitutions. So the first thing we want to do, let's substitute for these gates right here. Well, so, uh, so we know that an AND gate can be substituted with an OR gate with inver inverts on the input and a bubble on the output, right? So we'll just do that. So we'll put A over here by the side uh, and then we'll put in an OR gate The bubble on it, and another OR gate. The bubble on it, and then we'll put two bubbles here, and three bubbles here. And we'll put in uh, B C prime, and here we'll put in B prime C D. And then down here, uh, down here we're going to uh, we have an OR gate. Let's put in the substitution for the OR gate. So an OR gate gets an AND gate with bubbles on its input. Okay, so let's see about that. So then we have uh, an AND gate down here with bubbles on the output and bubbles on the input. Oh, I need another bubble. Okay. And let's see, I did, I did need to, uh, yeah, okay. Now, let's see what happens. Well, so the first thing we can do is we can, we can slide this bubble up and make that a prime. So that gets rid of this bubble. We can cancel these two bubbles because they're on the same wire, and we can cancel these two bubbles because they're on the same wire. And now we have, now we have, or gates with bubbles on the input but none on the output. Well, if we look at our substitution, an OR gate with bubbles on the output and none on the input is equivalent to an AND to a NAND gate. Okay? So then we'll just substitute in NAND gate and then we'll have A prime and then a NAND gate with BC prime going in and another NAND gate with B prime C D going in. And that's going to go into then this output gate that has a bubble on the output. So you still have our bubble there. We took these bubbles off because they canceled or we moved it up here to the A prime. And what do we have? Now we have NAND NAND. So we just did with graphics the same thing that we have done with our switching algebra. And some of you may find this much more attractive. <laughs> some of you may hate this. But uh, for those of you who want to use it, you're more than welcome. Uh, but it's probably better, it's easier probably most of the time to do it on paper with the, with the switching algebra. But not everybody would necessarily agree with that. Okay, well I think we're at a point. Um, I'm going to just maybe well, we've got a little bit more to do. Let me do that, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of... Well, may, maybe I'll work some problems. I'll do that. Okay, so let me... Uh, yeah, let me switch this back for just... A, well, let me not do that. Let me, uh, let me bring up the problems. I think I have that in the, in the 
So let's go on the website. I believe this is it. And we'll get the homework list. Here, I'll just pause it so we don't waste time. All right, so here we are. There's our homework list. Problems 5-3-A, 5-7-A-C-D, 5-9-A, and so forth. All right, so let's we'll we'll start with uh, let's just start with uh, we'll do the first one and the last one maybe if we have time. So five three a so five five. Let's see how come how come this is not moving. There we go. So five three a says uh, find the minimum sums of products for each of the following using a K map. Okay, so this is so so this one has min term zero two five and six in a three variable problem. All right, well, this is, this should be pretty easy. Let me just get the KMAP already set up. Uh, so I'm gonna do the KMAP. So A and B, C down the side. Now let me switch this. So. It's min terms uh, 0, 2, 5, and 6. Okay, so I'm going to put these in. So 0, 2, 5, and 6. All right, now let me sw switch the thing and so you can see. So we have 0, 2, 5, and 6. And there's our three variable map, A, B, C. All right, now. Uh, how would we get the minimum solution? Well, so the only thing tricky about this is you have to remember there's a wraparound from 2 to 0. So we're going to group. Clearly we'll group 1 and 2, but then we also have to group 2 and 0. Now can we group anything with 5? No, we cannot. So it's going to be all by itself. All right, so let's do this one first. And, and so this is 0, 1 for A, 0, 0 for B, C, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. Remember, we always have to switch these rows. And that's why we numbered them. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, but on a three variable map, we just have one variable up here, so it's just 0 this column and 1 this column. So this box here, A is 1, B is 0, C is 1. So that's A, B prime, C. This group of two, A is 0, so it's A prime. And up here, B is 0, but down here B is 1. So the B term drops when we combine these two boxes. We drop one term. And then the C is going to be 0, so it's C prime. So that's A, A prime, C prime. And then this group of 2, clearly over here A is 0, there it's 1, so A drops. So we're just left with B, C prime. B, C prime. When you have a row or part of a row, you can. it's always pretty easy to read it off right there. And then you just have to figure out uh, what drops if it's a four-variable problem. So our final answer then is B C prime plus A prime C prime plus A B prime C. Now what if we didn't loop this with this box up here and we just had this box by itself? Well, you could do that, but now you add another variable. So instead of, uh, oh wait, did I, uh, let's see, what did I say that was? That was uh, A prime C. Uh, yeah, A prime C. Now you add to that, if you just do this by itself, now you add to that A prime B prime C. So that's that's an additional literal, which means another input into that AND gate. So instead of two two input AND gates and one three input AND gate, we now have two three, put an, three input AND gates and one two input AND gate. Now let me just say, uh, this may not seem like a big deal, but it, back in the days when you were doing this with discrete chips, you would definitely notice if you had a box of parts and you didn't have uh, the right size AND gate, you, you, that was a problem. You'd have to go get it. Uh, so we might have had, say, a bunch of two input AND gates hang, hanging around and just one three input AND gate. And next thing you know, now we need two three input AND gates. All of a sudden, we have to get another chip. Uh, so that, that definitely can make a difference. Now when you implement this in an FPGA, probably doesn't matter because you're going to do it with lookup tables anyway. But if you implement it with a discrete, uh, you know, uh, application specific chip, then that extra input adds a little more real estate 
to your design on your integrated circuit. And that extra real estate uh, might mean a few fewer chips per wafer. And a few fewer chips per wafer is just going to dilute your profit because you're, you're basically paying the same for processing every wafer. So, um, so you do want to you do want to take advantage uh, of these uh, of of combining term, combining boxes. Whenever you have a one here and a one there, you want to use the wraparound box. You don't want to leave that out. Okay. Um, so let's go back and look at the next problem. Uh, let's see. So the next problem. Let's do the last one. So five. So that was five twenty three. Okay, 523 and 523, 523, oops, so here it is. For each of the prompt functions in 522, find all the minimum product to sum expressions. So, so, uh, so this asks for the SOP, this asks for the POS. So we're doing 23, so let's do the POS. So let's pick one. We'll pick... Uh, Let's, oh my God, this is crazy. Uh, let's pick, let's pick, let's pick D, okay. We have a lot of don't cares on this problem. So we have min terms 4 and 15. So first off, let me, uh, let me, let me generate. Uh, so this is going to be a four variable problem. Okay. Now, um, let me, so let me put them in. So 4 and 15. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, and 15, I know is there. And then we want 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. So that's, that's our problem. Let me then uh, switch this back. All right, so there we are. The don't cares are marked with X's and the ones are in their place. Um, all right, so this is pretty good. So obviously we want to loop all these together right there. And then we want to do this. And we don't, we'll take these don't cares as zeros. Oh, sorry, my bad. We're doing the POS solution, aren't we? Okay, so the POS solution's a little different. So let's let's do this differently. Uh, so I'm going to have to draw this again because I messed it up. I have to look at the zeros. Okay, A, B, C, D. Now here we have zeros here. We have don't cares here. We have zeros here and there and there and we have don't cares there and there and these other two are where we had ones now um, okay so you're thinking well okay no problem so how does this work well so in this case uh, the first thing we want to do is there's lots of different options but the best one is to take this group and combine it with this group over here to make a group of eight. And then what does that leave? That leaves these two and this one. Now, how best to do that? Well, this one makes a good group of four. And what about this? Would you do a group of two here? No, no, no. You would take this group of two and combine it with this pair up here to make another group of four. So we have one group of uh, eight. So in this case, a group of eight is going to be a single variable. And what variable is that? Uh, turns out to be B prime. I'll let you think about that. But it's definitely B prime because this column cuts across both uh, uh, C and C prime and D and D prime. So they drop 
and this would be A prime, but this would be A, so A drops. So you're left with B, and it's not B, it's B prime, because this is B prime here, and that's B prime there. This is 0, 0, and this is 1, 0. This group of four, then, is going to be uh, C prime, it's going to be A C prime, and the group of four down here that wraps around is going to be uh, A D prime. So the final answer then is going to be A D prime plus A C prime plus B prime. Okay, so I think we'll stop with that and um, We'll pick up then uh, and finish up. Uh, we just about finished this chapter, but we'll, we'll, we'll put the finishing touches on it and go on to the next unit uh, on Friday.